And so if there's a true ap apocalypse, I think if the if if this coronavirus thing actually got really bad and there's a proper apocalypse, it would take a while before I'd have to cook and eat dog, but it wouldn't take that long. Nah, it'd take a while. How long do you have to, you'd probably get sick of, what, eating tuna? Damn, yeah, I don't think it's going to be like, <laughs> I go to the cupboard and I'm like, oh, tuna again, better eat the dog. I think, I think it'd be a, a last resort before you eat the dog, but... You'd want to eat the dog before it gets too skinny, but... That's very true. There's... <laughs> you would. I'm not I don't, but I was just thinking then, because I don't think I'd want to eat optimally, dog... Optimally, optimally, but I don't, think I'd, I don't think I'd want to eat dog food, so I'd keep eating... No, you... Keep feeding the dog in the meantime. Yeah, exactly. Keep Until he runs yeah. exactly out of food, and then you eat the dog straight away. If you want to survive for a long time, young blood, you've got to make some sacrifices. Meat, gotta... is, meat is meat. So... Yeah, meat is meat. As far as actually eating the food like we're a slow cooker you can make it not tough but yeah it wouldn't wouldn't be a first preference but if, it's to, if, the it's to, if it's to the extent we're like all right you've been in quarantine for like eight weeks there's not one can of baked beans in the house and literally like starving. have you tried looting by this point well if the virus got bad enough you don't want to go i'm talking if it was like a proper apocalypse. what do you mean it's flying around like a cloud yeah, like you don't want to go outside. The virus is where, a cloud. Where people have been. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Is the extent it's got to be for me to eat the dog. I'm not talking about like, oh, the power's gone out. I better eat the dog. I'm not talking <laughs> like that. But I don't know. So how do we get onto this? I don't know. Anyway, how are you, Mitch? I'm good. Yeah, good. That's awesome. I'm warmer now that I've put a, um, a hoodie on. Representing for Tats Up. Yeah. Shout out Kev Mack. Good on him. So, yeah. Good. You have to get him on the podcast one day. Man, we, we've never ha we never have anyone on the podcast these days. No, it's we actually, don't guess. You know, it's actually good. I actually prefer not having guests. Fuck guests. Had Andy Sucked and Brad and that sort of stuff and Aki, but eh. I think. Well, what are we? What are we up to? Eighty-seven. Somewhere around there, yeah. I think it's eighty-seven. We're like encroaching on a hundred. I know. Maybe. And I think that we won't do a special episode for a hundred. I think we probably won't even realise we've reached 100. It would be like a catch-up, and then we're like, oh, what's the number is this one? Oh, 103. Oh. Like, you know how some people do podcasts by themselves, and then like for like their 50th or 100th episode, they get a uh, guest on for that, that? Yeah. Maybe I might we, I might do the 100th by myself. <laughs> I'd fuck you off, that. and then I'll just talk by myself for 100. I'd be all for that. I'm just going to straighten up the camera a little. It's a little wobbly. There we go. Um, Didn't even move it. Did move. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Um... Do you like the reverse guess where we have less guests than I like ever? And then for the two hundred, we'll just record for half an hour with us just sitting here staring at each other, <laughs> not even talk. I'm just not even in the room. We'll just put up like CCTV security cam footage of an empty room. For Holy shit! You just reminded me CCTV ca camera footage. Mm -hmm. I haven't got it, but I will get it and I'll, yep. I'll show you. Yep. So at our work at CSA, we've got an operations department. Yeah. And Chris in operations, what are you looking at? I just noticed on the camera, I haven't actually looked, but there was a weird glare behind me. I think that light, I'm going to turn that light off. I just noticed there's a big glare behind me. How do I turn that one off? With a switch. The, the switch. Wrong, switch. wrong, wrong, wrong. Go over there. Yep. Go over there. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, because I noticed there was a That was pretty glare. aggressive, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Um, Go over there. Jeez, it's like you're trying to tell me about a fishing video game or something. But um, yeah. yeah, I just noticed there was that a big glare behind. Way it's way better now. It's probably been really annoying for people for the last couple of episodes, but no one really watches this. No, no one cares. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about before you interrupted Chris, me about the light? From work. Yeah, so what were you saying? Yep. So Chris from Operations um, yep. had to get a box down from the storeroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's like already a ladder there or something. I don't know why there was two ladders, but there was two ladders. Mm. And he's climbing up. He comes into the oh, he comes into the workshop and goes, "Look at my arm." I'm like, yeah. "What the hell?" He's got like a big like bit of claret coming bark, out bark and a bit off, of yeah. bur a few bruises. Burk, and stuff. Some burk off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and he's like, he's going on about how he fell off the ladder. He's like, "Oh, I'll get you the footage." Yeah. Got us the footage. Yeah. Fucking hilarious. That's so he's cool. climbed the ladder right to get this box down and the ladder slipped and he got his arm wedged in oh, between two ladders. Jesus. That's super funny. Yeah. <laughs> he's just hanging there and then he had to get down or whatever and he got down. Yeah. 
Anyway, you got the footage. So I'll have to show you the footage, but it's fucking funny. Definitely. Anyway, it fell off the ladder. Give me the footage. Could have been worse. We'll put it up on the Sad Party YouTube channel just for the hell of it. (laughs) It'd be awesome. I'll get Chris to sign a waiver, but it should be fine. You should cook some more sausages. I don't want to. My judo chopping hands are already sore. (laughs) Oh, I feel like some more sausages, but my hand hurts. (laughs) I'll just roundhouse kick him this time. Oh, Jesus. Um, What else has been happening? Trying to think if anything good's happened. Oh, I went for a run today, which is cool. Oh, really? Fun. Yeah. Where'd you go? I uh, just did Cape Warmai. There's like a 8K running loop around yep. there. Didn't find any big pink rabbits? No, 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 Jesus. Yeah. I remember that. I went there like during the day. Yeah, the pink so, rabbit joint. Yeah. yeah. It's the pink really rabbit weird joint. when it's even there. Uh, I sent you the photo, didn't I? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's fucking looking. bizarre. It's insane. It's huge. It's a really weird. giant, pink, yeah. weird rabbit. Hmm. Just there. Anyway, yep. went for a run around Cape Willamai. It was fucking really nice. That's good. Headphones on. Listen to like, not old Parkway Drive, not new Parkway Drive, but like middle Parkway Drive, like Deep Blue and listen oh, okay. to Atlas. Okay. Those two albums, you've probably never heard of them because you don't listen to anything newer than 2004. Yeah. Accurate. That's about fucking two... accurate as shit to say it's... that. Yeah, you're actually right. I think you're about right. It's I think accurate since, as shit. Anything newer then... than 20... 2004, you don't listen to it. Anything... Newer than 2004, with the exception of Norma Jean and Cancer Bats, I don't think I've listened to anything else newer. Really? Yeah. Because you are definitely um, stuck in your zone. I think the word for it is cultured. Mm, yeah, pretty not really that cultured. Well, there's been nothing good. Well, I certainly disagree with that. Yeah, but I certainly won't take your opinion on board either, so... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Anyway. You still think Fred Durst wears red hats backwards? Fred Durst went downhill after $3 bill. I didn't like no, Significant dude. Other. Significant Other. Significant Other. Is sucked. fucking good. No. I... No. Really good. <sighs> dude, you know what the best Limp Bizkit album is? And I don't care what you say. Am I going to smash this over your head if you say anything other than $3 bill? What are you going to say? Dude. Go and cry, bro. It's fucking What's that? Golden Cobra. Like the new one after... I haven't even heard that. I, don't ha- I think I'm happy. Dude, it's so good. Three Dollar Bill was good. Golden was... Cobra is fucking awesome. Three Dollar Bill it's was the best that, one ever. That nexus point of like the new metal where it was like metal with some screaming but they rap. Like, Dude, that was a big thing, rap. Yeah. I've That's li- funny because... There's a new band There's like band that I'm listening to at the moment. They're called um, Unity TX. And they right. have like a a black rapper, is it, but they play heavy stuff. They do they do air conditioning repairs? Uh, no. Because the TX valve features prominently in air conditioning. So oh, that's really I, good to know that. I assume Unity TX is Maybe means uh, Texas. air conditioning company. No. Maybe mean Texas. I think you're wrong. I'm pretty sure air conditioning was around before Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're wrong. You're a fuckhole. No. Well, yes, but anyway. <laughs> um, so have you finished telling me about Unity TX? Yeah. Yeah. A new but, album, Mad Child. But I just find it really hard to find things Mad Boy, that aren't it? crap that are new. Yeah, I think you've, uh, you're have you blinded by 2003. But that, I think... I was talking with my boss about this recently. I think you tend to like things that were popular when you're in your formative years like when you're sort of like late teens starting to go out and do things and actually have fun and that sort of stuff like so I think for me like what I'm an 82 model so I was 18 in the year 2000 so like mid-teens so sort of 15 I started working when I was 15 and sort of doing stupid things up until I was about probably 22 so anything that happened between like 1997 through to sort of 2004, 2005, that's the sort of, that's when I was sort of travelling around when we were riding BMX a lot and travelling to Europe and the States and things like that. And I'm like, that's when all just the stupid things happened in life. And I think, like, stupid in a good way, like fun and ridiculous. And and I think that's why you tend to like that sort of stuff. And I like, you know, I like dirt bikes. Like, late 90s dirt bikes are my favourite yeah. bikes. Like, I want to collect... Every 1996 model motocross bike. That's my my mission one day is to have eight motocross bikes. How many have you got? What's that? Of the 96 models. Bits and pieces of a couple, but I don't have 
complete, complete of, of any yeah, of them. Complete of any of them. But what I mean is, like, that's what... The so 96, point. everything but a CR will be cheap. Yeah. CRs are still pretty cheap. Not 96. the 500. CR 250s are still reasonably cheap. 125s aren't worth much at all. All the other brands, you get in for about the price of this Posada bottle. So, yeah. But that's the thing. Like, I like them over all the 80s models, but guys in their 40s and 50s now love 1980s motocross bikes, and guys in their yeah. 50s and 60s love 1970s motocross bikes, and you tend to like what was around in those formative years. Like, I can remember when I was, like, 13, 14, like, reading moto magazines and looking at those bikes there and going, I want that, like, just loving it. Where yeah. now, like, your 2020 CRF looks amazing, but... Anyone can walk into a Honda shop and buy a 2020 Serif and they could replicate all the things you've done to it. With Not yours. really anyone anymore because they're too expensive. Yeah. But, but what I'm trying to say, yeah. to that point, because mm. 1996 model dirt bikes were good, dude. Yeah. I grew up and there were the 2004 model KX 250F. Yeah. Yuck! <laughs> Fucking shithead, dude. <laughs> exactly. So, hey, I just started my bike, and now it doesn't start yeah, anymore, yeah. and now it's catching fire, yeah. and fucking doesn't run, and now it's... Oh, I, I have a sore leg, because it's got an electrical problem, the rod <laughs> shot out the side of the thing and smashed the stator off and hit me in the thigh. <laughs> oh, my... Oh, I'm just going to change... Let me just change the oil on my 04 KX250F. Oh, now I've got to drain the coolant first, because I can't change the oil filter. Yeah, I get the of radiator it. hose off. <laughs> I remember, because... Because I'm 150. Like when the first gen was it for was it 400 F came out in '98. Same sort of thing. Like to change the oil filter, the radiator hose ran directly over the oil filter cap, so you had to dump the cool. No, actually, oh, no. Sorry, the Cowies didn't have the cap, dude. You oh. had to take the whole fucking water pump cover off with the oil filter inside it. Really? To, so you had to drain the coolant every single time you changed the oil filter. I think you probably did it wrong the no, entire time. No, legit. And then you used to buy the Pro Circuit... Remember those red Pro Circuit covers you used oh, to be able to get from? Yeah, yeah. They had the separate thing. Yeah, and I just remembered I was remembering it incorrectly. With the YZ400F, it was, you had to rotate the header pipe up to get the oil pump, oil cover off. Oh, oil, that's oil such a off. cool design. But especially because... Lucky no one to, thought of that. To do an oil change properly, you've got to get the engine hot. So then you're trying to rotate a hot header pipe up. It's just stupid. Like, so... and. When they went to the 426 in 2000, they just made a new header pipe that sat up higher. It's like, oh, how can Why didn't they do that yeah, earlier? Why didn't they do that earlier? And I can remember with one of my early 400s, like when it was really hot, getting a piece of wood, got the header pipe super hot, get a piece of wood and put it under it, and belting it with a sledgehammer to bend it up out of the way so I could get the oil filter cover off. Like, just first gens of bikes are always stupid. When they brought out the... Generally. The alloy yeah. frame CR250 in 97... And it was so rigid, you'd land off a jump and your teeth would explode. Like, that was Dude, so rigid. Oh, I remember in 2016, mm. I rode for Joe Stevens MAD, mm. and we had KDM 350s, mm. and that was the first, the first, first gen of steel that frame, one. Yeah. No, not the first steel frame. Oh, no, 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 no. first frame. time you'd ridden steel frame for a while, because you were riding alloy frames. For yeah, I only ever rode them. That was the first <clears> time I had, <throat> ever had a KDM. And we yeah. were testing with Steve Powell yeah. at SPMX, yeah. and you had to take them was some fucked up system to get the rear shock out of it. Yeah. They never, like, thought of it. Yeah, because they'd just gone to linkages, Paul Powell, yeah. We're at Frankston, and Paul Powell's had to fucking pull this hot bike sub, apart. subframe off? I think you had to take the subframe off to get some the shock out. Up. So then you got to take a hot exhaust pipe off yeah, and yeah, get yeah. the subframe hot, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot part, everything off yeah. to get this fucking shock out. And I'm like, hey, Steve, there's no other way to do it. He's like, mate, this is how we have to do it. My YZ, it's fucking worse. being the YZ two-stroke, it's so easy to get the shock out because what you do with that one, you can do it in. Let me think how many screws it'd be. It'd be two bolts for the seat, one screwdriver for the hose clamp from the airbox to the back of the carby, yeah. and the two bottom subframe bolts. Oh, and the muffler. You go take the muffler off. But then the whole subframe just flips up and flips just up. lays upside down on the handlebars, and then it's just top shock bolt, bottom shock bolt, and it's out. It's so easy. I can have the. Yeah. I did a test a little Those while KMs ago. Those KMs are bad. Yeah, I did a test a little while ago with my YZ. Me, just an average idiot in the garage, I can have the forks and shock out of my bike in seven minutes. Like, And that wasn't rushing, that was just, okay, I'll just start doing stuff, pull it out, and go, oh, look at the time, that was only seven minutes. Yeah. And they're so simple. Like, yeah, those certain bikes are, are just so easy. I think because they didn't have a mid-pipe, that was why. 
Oh, really? Oh, okay. So yeah. had to pull like fucking some amazingly large amount of exhaust out. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, it was a nightmare. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't I have just, to do it, so yeah. it's fine. That's the thing. I like... That's why I like... My silly YZ. Everything about it is just so simple and easy. And the amount of things that I've just botched together to keep going... Like, I've told you about the wooden top shock, bolt, uh, top shock bearing. Yes. Yeah. Right? Like... But it's just simple. It's just easy. It doesn't matter. Like, it only oscillates about 8 degrees or something like that as the shock goes up and down. Maybe 10 degrees or something like that. It doesn't need to be fancy, but it's just simple. It's easy. Yeah. It's like I, um, we had at work, they had a car meet because they're all like hot rodders and things like that. Yeah. Had a car meet and all these old school hot rods came down and I'm looking in the engine bay of these old school hot rods. I'm like, it's just a big engine like a really big engine with a supercharger on the top to push heaps of air into it and a couple of huge carbies to push heaps of fuel into it and then just some exhaust pipes and then just a basic manual transmission and then a big shaft and a diff everything's just so simple it's yeah. just so basic no bullshit. like the electrical system there's a distributor distributors are a little bit annoying but modern distributors are pretty basic and some spark plug leads and you look at it and you go oh Everything's there. If something goes wrong, you can just lean in over the bonnet and go, I think that's what's wrong, and just fix it. Yeah. Like, it's not hard. But, like, I looked under the bonnet. I never looked... The new car we got recently, I looked under the bonnet because I had to put fill up the window washer bottle. And I'm like, I'm pretty good with mechanical stuff, but I have no idea what anything is under that bonnet. And that's a diesel, but everything's electronic, and... they got covers on Everything's got a big yeah, day and, cover on and it. And you open the bonnet up, and there's, like... Three yellow things, like window washer bottle cap is yellow, radiator overflow bottle is yellow, and something else was yellow. And it's basically saying, oh, if it's yellow, you can touch it. If it's not yellow, don't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, so only touch the yellow. All yeah. right, awesome. And like, it's a brand new car, so obviously it's got a five-year warranty and that sort of stuff. But if something went wrong, I look under it, I'm like, I know what I'm doing with mechanical things, but there's nothing I can do here. Yeah. Like, my work is done. All right, cool. Let's just call RACV. <laughs> yeah. It's... It's it's fine when it's a brand new car, and I guess that's why you pay the money but for a brand new But you just think, thing. like, 10 years down the track, when exactly, someone has yeah. a second hand, you just go, for... Yeah. Like, I I miss my Hilux more than I miss certain dead relatives of mine, because it was so basic. It was so simple. It did 340,000 Ks. Nothing ever went wrong with it. Yeah. And if something did, it's like those old school hot rods. You look at the bottom and you go, oh, the big thing there has a hole in it. I'll get a new big thing. Yeah, it's just bolt it on. It's so easy. It's like... It's simple, and I think that's what's scary. Like, your 2020 CRF, what's that going to be like when, not that it matters for you or Honda or anything now, because you won't have that in 15 years' time. What's going to be like in 15 years' time when something goes wrong with the electrical they're system? They're still pretty good. Uh, there's still a fair, I mean, bit, there's a fair bit going on with EFI and yeah. things like that. But look how much better an EFI CRF is over the Carby ones. But the, compare your one... To an 08 Sierra 450. Dude, 08 Sierra 450s are legit good. Yeah, I know. All an right, 04 or 03. Let me change that. The Sierra 250 carby model. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, dude. Like, it's such a piece of garbage. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've had mates in the past who have been like, oh, I got myself a dirt bike. Yeah, I got nice and cheap. Paid like two and a half. It's a 08 Sierra 250. And I'm like, oh, oh they go, no. I'm just having problems. Oh, it's got the black, edi- it's the black edition one. Yeah. And you're I'm like, just oh, having still- problems... Starting, starting it, it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's always the same thing, and it's it like, just doesn't start. Yeah. I don't know. It's like oh, I picked I tried up dragging and... it behind my car. For <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I roll started down the hill, and um, well, I tried roll starting it, and I rolled down the hill, and now I'm trying to push it back up, and it kind of sort yeah. of half started, but yeah. it didn't. Exactly. It's like yeah, that's what they do. That's <laughs> it's just, pretty much. Well, really... How can I fix it? Oh, it'll cost you about. Five and a half grand, it'll be exactly like a second hand 2020, <laughs> 2010 CRF 250. So, I don't know. Like, I haven't. It'll be good for five hours. I think I might have told you, on, probably on one of the podcasts, I haven't ridden a late model EFI four stroke. Yeah, you haven't. Yeah, I need to have a rider one. Mm. We need to go riding one day soon. Definitely. I don't know. But, um. Did you be blown away by how good they are? Oh, I can imagine. Well, it's like. It's like. Oh, we, I just spoke about this on the podcast too. Like when they went from carby cars to EFI cars, the difference is just insane. It's phenomenal, the difference. So, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we, that we haven't talked about yet. Let me have a look. I don't know. I haven't really thought about. Um, like we were talking about, I haven't been 
saving notes in my phone when things we do, have We happened. haven't done comedy. You haven't done nothing. We haven't done anything. Dude, I'm screwed for doing stand-up nights. Like, now working, like, 11 till whenever I finish at night. Yeah. I, I, dude, I can't. Oh, that's right. You're working evening shift now, aren't you? Like, uh, not evening. Like, sort of like oh. a day arvo sort of shift. Kind yeah. of afternoon sort of setup. Yeah. And it's, dude, it's like... I thought, like... I thought, I'm like, yeah, sweet, I'll have my mornings. Dude, I'm that tired, I can't even... Yeah. I get up, like... You need to like, find an open mic night that's an open mic morning. Yeah, like a breakfast comedy club. <laughs> a breakfast comedy club. Oh. But I could probably, like, get... The th- I could get to a club after work, but that's, yeah. like, I'll get there at, like, 10 o'clock. Yeah, so, and sign-ups, like, 7 to... Yeah, so it makes it hard. thirty. yeah, exactly. You could probably call them and say, hey, can you put me on this? I'm going to be there later. Like, because you'd be on later anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, so, ke- I'm keen. I'm keen as to do it. With all this coronavirus scare, there probably won't be that many people doing it. But then again, it's gatherings of over 250 people that have blocked out. There's never going to be that. Nope. <laughs> These things, but... I might just start booking shows at the um, comedy store. Yeah, it's fair enough. Well, I guess you'll be... Under 250 You'll be free, well. you'll be free um, one of the coming weekends because the comedy festival's been cancelled. So. Has the comedy festival yeah, been cancelled Yeah, comedy festival's been cancelled, yeah. So, Fuck, really? Spill, yeah. Fuck, that sucks. I don't know who was coming over for it, but... Yeah. I'm sure, yeah, it would have been good, but... Oh, well. yeah. See, um, Bert Kreischer's got a special coming out next week. Yeah, Tom, is that... Tom when Tom is Segura it next week? week after. Yeah, Bert Kreischer's like, I think, three days' time. Comes out on Chris the 17th. Chris has got one as well. Oh, really? Yeah, there you go. I like the picture you sent me of Chris Delia wearing the Honda shirt. What is that Rude brand? What's Rude? R-H-U-D-E. I don't know. Um, Jay-Z was wearing it as well. I don't know what that is. I'm going to Google it right now. Oh, so he had... So that was a, like, Rude oh, LA? I just saw the wing. Yeah, uh, yeah, Honda yeah. wing. Yeah. But it was Rude brand, so I don't uh, know what, I don't what that, that is. is. I don't know, probably, there's probably some people listening going, you fucking retards. Well, um, well, as we said, I hate you, dear. Yeah, if I haven't, like, you think it's bad that I haven't listened to any new music since 2004. I haven't bought any new style of clothes since, like, 1998. I still dress exactly the same as I did when I was a child. <laughs> I literally do. Yeah. I mean, jeans and a t-shirt or shorts and a t-shirt forever. Black t-shirt. Whoa. What? Guess how much that is. Oh, so it's not actually the wing. No, no, but it's like a... No, what, what the hell? How is that hoodie? $725, dude. Put it, put it up to the screen and show people on that. It looks crap, too. It doesn't actually look any good. How is that hoodie $725 US? No, it's Australian. Oh, Australian. Oh, okay. That's, that's bargain then. So. Dude, that's incredible, man. It's ridiculous. And it's called Ronda, like it's a Ronda t-shirt. But they had a, um, like a full Honda looking... Yeah, the one you sent me, I just assumed it was the Honda wing. That was a full Honda wing. Um, no, there is a Honda wing one. Mm. But I don't know, this is no, quite no. expensive clothes. That's ridiculous. Yeah, People I can't are believe idiots. it. Anyway. It's incredible. I already, already hate that brand. No, nah, I'm already off it. Um, hey, anyway. Why don't we start Sad Party Clothing and just... Charge exorbitant amounts. Like, just put out... Do you remember Big Baller brand? What? You know Lonzo Ball? The basketball player? No. His dad's LeVar Ball? Um, that. That's it there. $879 for a freaking hoodie. $879 that's for a hoodie? That's the hoodie right there. US. Jesus Christ. That's the Honda hoodie, right? I wouldn't pay $879 for a Honda. Let alone a Honda... Like, a, a hoodie with a Honda wing on it. There you go. 800 dollars 